Aaron Sorkin is here again. He is an award-winning television and film writer. His most famous scripts include Malice, A Few Good Men, and The American President. He is best known as the creator of the hit NBC series, The West Wing. Uh, Our front door. Mr. President, we want to send Fitzwallis down there. Basically, we think we can get St. Jacques to fracture Bazan's army. So if we invade... It becomes peacekeeping. Okay, send Fitzwallis down. Anything else? No, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. In May, he announced that he would be leaving the show at the end of the season. I am pleased to have him back at this table. Welcome. Thank you. All right, news first. All right, I mean, why are you leaving the show? I mean, was this, did, did the NBC fire you or did you resign? We're very good at this question. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> Two of your producers came into the makeup room before the show and asked me um, what they wanted Chiron, what I wanted Chiron on the bottom of the screen. And I just told them to put my height and weight down there, I think. <laughs> Uh, here, he, you have to understand first that um, uh, in one-hour television, a script has to be delivered once every eight business days. Yes. If you deliver it once every nine or ten business days, you start to incur budget overages. Right. Uh, and The West Wing is an expensive show to do by the standards of television when it's on time and at budget. Out of 88 episodes that I did, we were on time and at budget. Never. Uh, once. Not once. Well, yeah, I don't think so. Well, what's the uh, wait, 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 wait. What's I'm the problem tell, here? I'm going to tell you what the problem is. Most shows are written this way. I write the first episode, you write the second one, you write the third one, you write the fourth one, and it, and it comes back to me. Uh, on, uh, on the West Wing, I, with uh, a, a team of very bright people, wrote every episode. Right. So you, you get behind. Uh, and uh, we would incur overtime for that reason. We would incur overtime also because the actors and the directors who work on the show, they're very committed to it. They want to get it right. The most expensive thing on any movie or TV show is going to be overtime. So we would go into uh, overtime hours. Now, we were able to successfully convince Warner Brothers for four years that the better the show was, the more money they were going to make. And, mm -hmm. and it turned out that, that that was true, by the way. That, uh, uh, Warner Brothers, uh, over four years, gambled... A lot of money on the West Wing. A lot of money on the West Wing. They ended up making all that money back, plus a profit of about $100 million. Uh, they did it not doing a show that's forcing people to eat snakes and worms. They did it you know, doing a show that was given literally every award for excellence in right, television right. Uh, uh, that's given. Um, uh, and so that's a success. You can be more successful than that, though. You can make a profit of $110 million on the show. But to do that, each episode has to cost less money. And if that's what you want to do, then you probably want to do it with someone else. Okay. I'm, pro I'm not your guy to do that. In other words, you want to cut the budget, I'm not the guy. Yeah, yeah. And I can't discipline myself enough to get it in on time either. Yeah, I don't think it's a matter of discipline. Because I, I, you have to, before you can write it, you have to have the idea. And you, you can't really force yourself to do that. You know, you... you uh, uh, you you want to get it done on time. Part of that money that you're spending is, is your money. Yeah, my exactly. money. I'm a profit participant. Right, right. Uh, but you, you have to have the idea. Now, before David you can write Kelly it. writes three or four of these at the yeah, same time. David Kelly is, uh, uh, is, is fantastic. My hat's and he's off living to with him. Michelle Pfeiffer, for God's uh, sake. That's a major distraction. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, and I don't know how he does it. He has a deal with the devil that I was never offered. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but the time had come yeah. uh, on the West Wing. Listen, the West Wing was, uh, without a doubt, the best four years of, of my professional life. For any better than writing anything you'd ever written. Better than writing A Few Good Men. Better than writing An American President. Yeah, better I mean, than I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not fond of comparing these things that way because they have all have been wonderful experiences. But right. the West Wing, because of the people that I was working with uh, on that show, the cast and the crew, and the writing staff and the producers uh, that I were working with, we... Uh, it was home for me. It was a family for me. It was uh, a very difficult decision leaving the show. It remains a difficult decision. But was it your choice? Uh, yes, it, it, it was. NBC and Warner Brothers came to me and said, listen, beginning in season five, uh, this is how we have to do the show from now on, uh, not like this. And I made the decision, uh, I'm really not going to be able to do my best work under those uh, uh, conditions, that perhaps the time has come now for me to leave. I was here four years. I don't want to stay too long at the and fair. And you still have your profit thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what they say about the way you do it. Some say this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that you are brilliant at small moments. Do you know what they mean? No. You don't? No. <laughs> well, here's what I think they mean. Okay. You can just write little things that are going on between characters. Mm -hmm. That there's no one in the world can have a, a conversation that is not dramatic. 
but it's so real and so powerful and moves so fast that it's just compelling. No, it's nice to hear. Well, but come on, you've heard this before. <laughs> it's nice to hear. Well, I enjoy you writing. labor over doing that. I do, and I, uh, I enjoy the sound of dialogue. It's the first thing that attracted me to, to writing in the first place. I was taken, my parents took me to the theater when I was very, very little before I knew what the plays I was seeing were about. I was too little to understand Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf in that championship yeah, season. Exactly. But the, <laughs> the dialogue, which I didn't understand, did sound like music to me. Yeah. And that's what yeah, I wanted to imitate. Yeah. Um, uh, so I like writing small moments. I don't like being on the nose. I don't like... What does that mean, on the nose? Uh, being on the nose is, um, I I if this is a scene of, about, I've got to come in here and get you to do something, coming in here and saying, Charlie, we've got to go do something. Right. Um, uh, in other words, not every line has to be moving the plot along. There are moments in life that aren't about plot, which are nonetheless entertaining to an audience. Yeah, that's, and that's what you did. That's what I like. Yeah. Would you do anything different? Uh, with the West Wing? Yeah. Uh, I you know I haven't really had time to think about that. I, I don't think so. I, I really did. Uh, listen, there were a lot of highs and lows with the West Wing. There were particular personal highs and lows, which I think you know about. I mean, I was arrested right. uh, in, uh, in the middle. Um, Oh, well, speaking of that, are you okay and everything? Are you, you, are you, I'm great. Thanks are you for listening asking. to your parole officer? And, you know, <laughs> yes. Can, I'm, you, can uh, you look and I'm, can tell your parole officer I've been very perfect? And, uh, well, I don't have to tell him. He <laughs> takes a little glass <laughs> bottle and <laughs> he finds out for he himself. Tests himself he, does he? Yeah, they, they've decided not to take my word for it. I can understand why. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, I was leaving the graphic details out. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's okay. You, but it has been. You've stayed uh, clean. Like, Yes, we say. Yeah, I have, and uh, thanks for asking. And, um, uh, eighty-eight episodes. You know, one of them is going to be your eighty-eighth best. Uh, uh, so there are there are things I've written on the West Wing I wish I could have back. Uh, uh, if that's what you're asking, there are episodes where I've said, "Would you, you want to do that again?" Oh yeah, give that back to me. Um, uh, I can do that much much better. But that's that, that's the way it goes. That, that's yeah. the nature of the thing. I'm I'm proud of the uh, of uh, the the work that we did on the show. And as I said, I'm. Uh, I, I got a chance to work with these people. It'll never be like this again. It, it, it was the uh, it was the most fun I've ever had, yeah. uh, and I, I, I just couldn't wait to get to work in the morning. There are two things that stood out. Everybody knows this. The scripts were brilliant. You casting. It was a wonderful. I mean, it, I don't know whether it, it yeah. was almost like you lucked out. Yeah, no, I sure did it, luck out. It's hard work, but you luck out. I mean, from Martin to to Rob, Alice and Johnny, to John Alice Spencer and, and John Rob Spencer and Brad and, and Richard, and yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm leaving people out. You I mean, a whole range uh, of uh, people that just boy, you just couldn't wait to see those people and see what they would say and how they would act and what would happen to their character, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. And, uh, yeah, and uh, as much fun as they were for people to watch on TV, <laughs> it was even more fun spending a day and and usually late uh -huh. into the but night. I, I know that because they all came here one night. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you could see. <laughs> Yeah, uh, 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 we have a great. It was it was a great four years. It really it'll never be okay. like that. Yeah. So what's next for you? First of all, what's next for West Wing? They've hired a new NBC's put in a new executive well, producer. John team. John Wells, uh, uh, Tommy Schlamy. Uh, 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 there were three executive producers: Tommy Schlamy, John Wells, and myself. John has uh, uh, will be the sole executive producer of the show. I know that he's written the first two episodes, and beyond that. I am as informed as, uh, probably less informed than you are yeah. uh, on the subject. I'm simply a fan of the show. I'll be watching it. Yeah, but, but you are here to say, before we turn to your future, you're here to say that this West Wing was a crowning achievement of my professional career and what we did on that show. Yes, I, uh, I, absolutely. Even though I, I don't think it's for me to say what's, what's been an achievement or not, I can tell you that personally uh, uh, West Wing has been absolutely uh, uh, the, the greatest thing uh, that happened to me. I'm so proud of it, uh, and uh, I will, f you know, uh, forever be friends with the people that I worked with. So, what do you want to do now? Uh, there are three things that I'm going to do now. I'm just not sure in what order I'm going to do them. First of all, I've spent the last uh, seven or eight weeks not doing anything. I, I watch. Are you really? Yeah, I watch baseball games. Really? I watch baseball games, and I have a two and a half year old, um, uh, and uh, 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 we just play together all the time. And that that has. That's been the greatest. <laughs> That's been the good part of not being at the West Wing anymore, yeah. is, uh, is, is playing with my daughter. What will be next will be, uh, again, I'm not sure in what order, but I'm, uh, I'm writing a new play uh, that will have its world premiere at the Abbey Theatre in Dublin. And uh, there will be a new movie and no, what, actually a new wait, TV wait, series. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. What's having its world premiere in Dublin? I can't tell you. 
I've been asked not to tell you. <laughs> By whom? <laughs> By the people who ask you not to do these things. <laughs> who are they? But I will come. Wait, who I, no, 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 to... <laughs> It's just a play. Uh, yeah, it is it's just it, a play, and it's in Ireland. It's not it's like it's in Ireland. Uh, um, but I, listen, I promise that um, that once I've done, I'm done writing it. I'll come back and tell you that. <laughs> Oh, we, we haven't written it yet. No, no, no. I have to, words, I've, you, the, I've been spending eight weeks watching baseball theater, and playing and, and with the Every theater two. in Dublin says, write a play and we'll premiere it here? Yes. Is that basically it? It's a commission. We have enough... We, they commissioned me to... Uh, uh, they come to you and they say... Uh, so they say, coming 50 up in two pounds, years, a great new play by Aaron Sorkin. That's exactly what they do. They put out a bro brochure yeah. and they say, we'll be doing... Uh, you know, the country wife will be doing this, and we'll be premiering a, a, a new play by Aaron Sorkin. <laughs> That's great. Oh, it's going to be, uh, I, I can't wait. I've, I've never been there. I understand Dublin is fantastic. They've never even seen you or met you? No, no, no. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. You think they're making a huge mistake? <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think we need to get them in here, though, All don't right. you? I mean, they need to be examined and talked and finding out what, what, what was going on in their little head. <laughs> yeah, you got a point. And, and by the way, have they heard about the West Wing? I mean, there's news in the this Sorkin front. A, this has been a great self-image evening for me. The, the precipitous kidding. ratings oh, drop. No, and the <laughs> no, and that's right. And how is it? Whatever. And, uh, yeah, no, yeah. But, but, you know, I mean, what, what's amazing here I, I, boy, no one, in, no one who does what I do has done more mm -hmm. in terms of an engaging dialogue with you about your life and your work and the best of it. That's nice of you. Yes? Yes. Because oh, I was going to say, I just want to go back and defend those ratings for a second and okay. say, nonetheless, yes. um, uh, uh, the audience remains the most upscale audience on TV. Upscale being uh, uh, defined by households earning $75,000 a year or more and uh, education. People have so, a lot of money to spend. It's a group of people advertisers like, right. and uh, that's why the show has been financially a huge success for both NBC and Warner Brothers, them. and I'm proud of that. And, and, and as, as a matter of fact, it's the first time, uh, uh, you're going to say, but what about A Few Good Men, and I'll explain that in a second. It's the first time in my career um, that anyone who has invested money in something that I've written has made money. Uh, it's the first time I've made money for anybody. Is that right? Yeah, it is. Because, now, with the move, A Few Good Men on Broadway, if you invested a dollar in it, you got 60 cents back. Um, uh, with The American President and A Few Good Men, the way I know that they didn't make any money is that I, as a writer, have a net position on that and have never seen anything. Net, so apparently, net, net, net. <laughs> there's no net in Hollywood. But, um, I was going to uh, say, yeah. where have you uh, been? Yeah, no, A Few Good Men made $350 million worldwide. Exactly. It, it's, it hasn't turned a profit yet. It cost $42 million where to make. Been? Gross $350 million and has not yet shown a profit. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's Hollywood. That's right. <laughs> yes. uh, all right. So this is the first thing you've done in which you really have been able to. In which everybody, you can't even, not even accountants can hide. Because uh, those people it, at Warner Brothers are so honest. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> Warner Brothers was terrific. Right. So they were just write a terrific. A play. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to write a new play. I'm going to write uh, a new movie. Yeah. Again, I'd like to tell you about what. Oh, no, here we uh, go. Aaron, did you come early here? Or should we no, what happened was there was a few hours ago, there was the conference call that you have with the publicist Wait, no, and the agent here, yeah. and the lawyer. Yeah, it's the uh, don't say anything stupid on Charlie Rose <laughs> conference call. <laughs> and, and, and so here's, that's what they begged me not to talk about. Okay, so we can't talk about the play. We can't talk about the movie. No, we were talking about the Knicks before. We yeah, we were. <laughs> not anything. Well, we can talk about the Lakers. And there will be... Oh. We can talk, talk about, about the Los Lakers. Angeles Lakers. Yeah. yeah, and Kobe. Yeah, yeah. Thoughts on that? My th well, you're not going to like this either because my thoughts on that are we should all be quiet. Um, well, I, 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 I like I, that fine. I okay, because I'm, I'm mortified for the two of them, um, uh, for uh, for him and her, and uh, I just think it's got to play its course, and that these things just simply we've we've got to somehow rise above the enzyme that we all have. I, I, have, I want to talk about Kobe. Um, uh, and I want to hear the gossip, but somehow you got to, I don't know, you got to rein yourself in and say, this is really serious stuff. This is life and death stuff. Um, and it is, it's not a, a man fodder. A trial for something exactly. that it's, it's not put him in prison. fodder for our entertainment. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, listen, I, again. Do you know I, him? No, I've never met him. I did a profile for 60 Minutes, too. Spent uh -huh. some time with him. And they liked him a lot. Yeah. And so does everybody else. Yeah. You know, that's not the issue. It's a, it's, that's it's not the issue. Okay, move on thing, beyond yeah. that. But for a moment, uh, you've got two. The Lakers have two new acquisitions. Yeah. 
Yeah, Did not enough it? basketballs for the Los Angeles Lakers. <laughs> it's going to be fantastic. Kind of like the problem I always had with the West Wing. Everybody wants to shoot. Is that yeah, it? yeah. Same thing. Uh, you had. You had every every great actor uh, wanted uh, more uh, lines. Um, but they didn't. Yeah. They, they, no, no. They, there, there was never any complaining. This was a cast that liked to pass as much as they liked to shoot. Yeah. And a kind of uh, Jason Kidd like cast. Exactly right. And it, it was only painful to me. I mean, I'd write a script. Uh, and say, you know, gee, Dulé Hill is, is terrific, and I just didn't give him a full meal here. Well, I'm not using Alice and Janney nearly yeah. as well as I can You're use saying it. they never complained about not having enough lines? Never. Not once? Not, not any actor on that show? Ever, ever once. Um, there was one time that, again, Tommy came to me um, about one of the actors, uh, uh, and, and I won't tell you who, who had oh, had... You are, you all are, right. <laughs> I mean... Uh, all right, Brad Whitford. Is there um, anything you want uh, to talk about? Yeah, Brad Whitford... Other than how good uh, West Wing is? <laughs> Brad Whitford uh, uh, had just uh, had two or three very heavy episodes uh, uh, in a row where he had a lot to do, and, uh, and was, it, it was showing its wear and tear. He was just getting tired. He was working uh, late hours. He was getting very, very tired, and Tommy came to me and said... Uh, listen, if you can... This is Tommy with a great last name. Tommy Schlamme. Tommy Schlamme. Uh, 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 he said, if you can, can you write Brad down uh, uh, a little bit in the next one? We have just got to uh, uh, give him a rest. I said, sure I can, sure I can. Uh, the next day, Brad saw me, he kind of grabbed me and said, I think people are telling you to write me down on the next one. They're saying that I'm tired. Don't. Don't do it. I'm not tired. I can do it. I can do it. No one has ever complained except possibly that one time when someone said they had too much. All right. I got more to talk to you about. Yeah, so okay. let's go through this one. You, you won't tell me about the Abbey. You won't tell me about the movie. What else are you going to do? Yeah, I'm not what trying are you to... doing that you can talk about? Well, I'm going to be, I am going to be doing a new TV series. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I love television. I, I really had a great time in television. In fact, I think you like it better than movies. You want to know the truth? I, I think I might. I, there, there are things in movies that you can do that you can't do. On it. For one, the thing that you have in movies is you have time. Um, I'm, I'm going to write a movie now, and it's, it's not due a week from Tuesday. It's due when it's good. Uh, and I, I'm as eager to make it as anybody, but, but, but you all want it to be good. That said, uh, first of all, if I had a great idea for a movie right now, and I was able to write the screenplay in a week, which you know I can't, uh, that movie would be released two years from now. And if it was a huge hit, it would be part of the public consciousness for a week. Uh, that's what movies have become now. They're, they're, they're like greeting cards, almost. Uh, with The West Wing, you know, we put on a show once a week. Uh, and and we've, we've been part of the consciousness yeah. for four years. I expect it'll continue it to is. be. It, it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, you know, what happens to huge television success, I mean, uh, and what it does to the character, yeah. what it does to, to the, the, you know, the storyline right. and people... You know, feeling like that they are a real part of their family, so to speak. I love it for that reason. And I, and I love it because I love... Uh, uh, I mean, I created the West Wing and Sports Night before that. I, I realized that the show is done differently, and the show is done ineff economically inefficiently, well, which is to say one person writing it... I want to make clear. One person writing it with a group of very no, talented okay. people helping. One person writing it uh, as opposed to a kind of committee uh, putting it out. I think, first of all, you stand a better chance of doing something good if it, if it has a single point of view. Uh, that, that, that's just right. What writing was the general. point of view of the West Wing? W whatever mine was. Um, uh, oh, I see. In, in, oh, in other see. words, you, you know, it's, right. rather than having to clear with you, is this joke funny? Um, uh, it, it's, it, all it has exactly. to be is funny to me. Right, right. Um, I, couldn't, I see that's true about everything. Yeah. A, a, committees are never good. And B, you'd have to have one vision for this show has one vision. Most great nightline has one vision. Yeah, that's right. There's a one sense of what this is about. Yeah. You know? um, uh, otherwise, I think you're just going to kind of be getting standard yeah. construction of jokes. And uh, uh, I like it for that reason. I like writing every week. Uh, I mean, I, I like, uh, uh, frankly, being that prolific. It, right. it's, it's why I built it. And uh, mostly I like coming and working with the same people every week. Uh, a, a repertory company instead of a pickup. Team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and you get to live with them and be with them. And yeah, it's terrific. And and fight wars together. You're in the trenches together. You know the the lows and the highs on the show were lows and highs for all of us collectively. It just yeah. the fact that you got a lot of criticism about the fact that this is sort of that that American president and and West Wing was simply uh, a left Democrat mm -hmm. point of view. You like that? You agreed with that? You that's nonsense. Uh, the, first of all. First of all, well, I mean, we'll just we'll talk about the West Wing. It's um, the the fantasy behind the West Wing wasn't the fantasy of having a liberal president with a liberal administration. It was the fantasy of having um, committed people, honest, committed 
bright, energetic people doing what they felt was, was the right thing, that, uh, that in our popular culture, our leaders have really only ever been portrayed as either Machiavellian or dolts. And, and here was something else. Here suddenly were people, uh, gee, it'd be nice if, uh, uh, if the, and that was the romantic. Well, here, was, here were people dealing with, real, real, with the real world, but uh -huh. at the same time, but, but had all the conflicts, with good people, with, but had all the conflicts. Exactly and, right. And, and different impulses about decisions and impact. It had to seem real. It couldn't seem like a fairy tale White House. And to seem real, these people have to believe in something. Um, they can't, well, I don't know, this is a point, this is a, they, they can't drive down the middle of the road. They've got to believe uh, in something. In this case, it's the president's a Democrat and, uh, and the staff Democrats. Uh, it hasn't appeared to me like conservatives have any, had any trouble gaining access to the airwaves. I'm not sure what the problem was here. <laughs> One hour on Wednesday night, it was fiction as opposed to Fox News, which bills itself as news. <laughs> Fair and balanced is yeah. what they built. Fair and balanced, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, balanced. what's the new show you want to do? Yeah. It's going to be good. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's going to be live action. It's going to be in color. <laughs> I can tell you all those things. Now, what it's going to be is um, this. I will tell you about because I'm very excited about it. It's. Uh, uh, I hope it's going to be what Larry Sanders uh, did with your business uh, talk shows. Uh, I would like to do that right. with. Late night sketch comedy uh, uh, with Saturday Night Live. In other words, behind the scenes at a network late night sketch comedy, edgy. Oh, that uh, would be great. Show. Oh, that's a great idea. I hope so. You know, I mean, it's, oh, that will be terrific. Yeah, I hope so. You can do that. I hope you're you, right. You can do that. I promise you, you can. do oh, that. Oh, that's nice of you to say. You know. I mean, all right. I'll, well, but we should talk about nice it only when I've done it. Uh, and that's my reluctance well, we to do it. We have four not, shows coming up. Then we have I'm, to talk about the <laughs> Abbey Theater. I'm we have not to talk trying to be movie. cute or cagey. I just haven't done any of these things yet, and I prefer, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and sitting, by the way, I'd like nothing more than to sit and talk about them. It's just, it postpones the inevitable, which uh, is you have to it. do All it. Right. Um, I want two things. One is, is writing. Mm -hmm. you, how do you, do you sit at a computer and just... Ultimately, but before you do that, there's just a lot of climbing the walls that you have to do. I mean, it's, when I'm writing, a casual observer wouldn't, wouldn't guess that that's what was going on. When I'm writing The West Wing... I'm talking to the people on the staff, and then I'm driving around in my car. I'm wandering around uh, uh, in my house. And it's when I have the idea, it's when I'm ready to write that I start uh, uh, doing this. And um, I try and do it uh, with as much energy as I can. I really think that that energy makes it, its way onto the page and then uh, onto the screen. Um, but, uh, but I do do it this way. I do it this way, by the way. This, is, this means type. Right, okay. I do it this way. Because there isn't time to do it the way I used to do it, which is that the very first thing I wrote, which was A Few Good Men, I wrote on cocktail napkins during the first act of Broadway shows where I was serving as a bartender. Yeah. Um, I was a bartender at Broadway shows. You, you work what's called uh, the walk-in, which is the half hour before the show. When people are coming in, you work the 15 minutes of intermission. intermission. During the first act, you've got nothing to do. And I was writing A Few Good Men uh, on cocktail napkins. I'd go home with my pockets story. full of cocktail napkins. I'd dump them out. I had a Mac 512K, uh, which was the second generation uh, right. Macintosh computer, yeah. which my roommates and I, we pulled our money uh, and we bought it. And I would start to type it, and that would be my first Try. polish uh, uh, that I was doing. I'd type it out, and I'd cross things out and do that, and I'd type it again. And I would do seven, eight, nine, ten drafts before I'd even show anybody uh, the thing. West Wing, we shoot my first drafts. Uh, there isn't time to, to, to polish it. Do you, when you watch television, what do you want to see? What are your television habits? Uh, th there are a number of TV shows uh, uh, that I like. I, I, I think that, listen, I, I like things uh, that don't get their humor from making fun of unsuspecting people. Or, or I, I, The reality shows aren't really my... Uh, my cup of tea. Like I said, I think there's plenty of audience out there for everybody. Sure. There's obviously audience for reality shows. Not only that, but there's audience for reality shows and The West Wing at the exact same time, despite your poor view of uh, of our Nielsen numbers. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing up. Would it, if I didn't bring that up, uh -huh. I would be. Don't worry. Every, <laughs> every every person who writes about television in America brought it up. Right, it's not like you're the first. Right. Um, and if I didn't bring it up, they'll say, look, you're just covering up for your friend here, Torkin. Sure. I will say this, though, Charlie. 
Um, uh, that it seems to me that the places that you and I were reading about the, the West Wing's ratings dropping, so they weren't the business pages. Uh, I mean, you did could read about it in the business pages. But you made your point that this, mo this was making a lot of money. It's you making a, a lot of money for a lot of people, but why have the ratings of shows and the box office grosses of movies and who's doing better in sweeps, NBC or Fox among women 18 to 34, why has that sporting event made it into the arts pages uh, of good newspapers? Um, uh, L.A. Times, my hometown uh, uh, newspaper, several times a week writes about who's winning uh, uh, the, the, the February sweeps race, the May sweeps race. I, I, the reason why I worry about that isn't just because often I'm on the low end of that contest, whether it's Sports Night or West Wing, or I'm sure the next one isn't going to be a barn burner either. It's this. I think West Wing was number one in the country. It was, yes. And that was now our undoing, is that there was a time when it was number one in the country. If it was number 40 in the country, right now you'd be telling me that our ratings are skyrocketing. You are amazing uh, to me. Um, how am I, though? <laughs> I, I give you this time to talk about your show, and you're so super sensitive about I raised this one little point about the fact that the ratings were declining, which uh, everybody's yes. written about it, and now you want to say, well, they shouldn't have been writing about it. Is that the, true? Yes. You want to say to me, I do want to say that too. I to you, I, first, you want to say object to you bringing it up, and then you uh, want to say the reason why. Then you want to say you should. I said, well, everybody's writing about. it. Then you say, well, they shouldn't have been. The it was stupid of them to be writing about uh, it. Was it stupid of them to be writing about it. But the reason why it's uh, dangerous to be writing about. Why are you kicking your friends? Is what I'm trying to ask you. Kicking my friends. <laughs> but the reason why it's dangerous to be writing about it is that uh, it leads one to believe yes. that uh, because a lot of people are watching something, you should be watching it too. Because people have stopped watching something, you should stop watching it too. That your attention should be where the crowd is. And the fact of the matter is that when you're watching The West Wing, it does not impact your enjoyment of the show one way or another, whether two other people are watching it or 20 million other people are watching it. And I can understand why this is information that you should read about in the business page, because it has a big effect on big companies like NBC and Warner Bros. I just don't understand why arts critics are writing about it. Answer this for me. Yes. If this show was number one mm -hmm. today, yes. would you still be there? Uh, I, I, that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, I don't know because if the show was number one today, chances are uh, I'd be facing the same, same, I would have been facing the same situation that I was facing before, which is to say uh, uh, the, the, the bank, the deficit financer, Warner Brothers, coming and saying, we have to do this show differently. Um, and so I probably would have done what I did, which was thank them and say, God, this was a great four years. Now, because you object to me telling you what I've read, I'm going to tell you this still. <laughs> someone said, I think this may have been Rob Lowe, said that, you know, you, it's excruciating to wait for Aaron's scripts. Mm -hmm. and what, maybe it was Rob, maybe it was not Rob. But they said, once you get them, it is so thrilling to be able to speak those words and to be in that zone where you're operating with an Aaron Sorkin script that you just feel lucky to be there. Please uh, take that as a compliment for oh, the other side I do. of what you've been doing. <laughs> I do. Charlie, I'm, listen, I, um, uh, I, one of the nice things about no longer being with the show is that I no longer have to uh, care what, uh, what the ratings are. I, I want the ratings to stay healthy because all my friends are still at the show. Um, uh, but it, it is a great relief to uh, actually not be super sensitive about what the ratings are anymore. But I do think because I, you know, this, there's the future. Again, I, 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 do, th I, I do think that the sport of, of who's ahead and who's behind is overplayed for, uh, for those who aren't in the business of it. And it's not just television, it's movies too. So when are you going to start working again? That's pretty soon. Okay. But yeah. I mean, you're having a great time with your two-year-old. I am having a great time with my two-year-old. Um, uh, but... Um, it's time uh, to work. Yeah, you know, I mean, she's going to uh, want to go to college, I hope, someday. So I better go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you very much.